Okay, so yeah, I graduated in 98. Um, so, uh, met my wife in graduate school. Married 20 years this summer. And uh, I've worked for Mercy 20 years. We actually got married two weeks into our new job. And uh, my, my role at Mercy is, I'm a, I'm, you could just, real simply, I'm a clinical lead. My job is to put together con ed courses for the other therapists and write protocols and stuff like that. I work, ooh, gotta stop moving around. Um, <laughs> it caught my eye and it kind of scared me for a second. I forgot to record. Uh, so uh, uh, I get to work really closely with our orthopedic surgeons. I forgot to tell them in the last class. I'm right across the hall from all our orthos. And uh, I'm kind of a liaison. And um, the geographical region I work with, the therapists I work with, uh, pretty much go from Joplin to, to St. Roberts. And so it's not just local, it's kind of that far away. And um, uh, love what I do. Absolutely love what I do. Today we're going to be talking about the FMS. Um, how many people are familiar with FMS in here? Good. So when we do the FMS, what are we looking for? If you don't know, that's okay, I'll tell you. Perfect. We're looking for movement patterns that suck. We're going to find movement patterns that are perfect. We're going to find movement patterns that are good. And we're going to find dysfunctional movement patterns. I'm more worried about finding dysfunctional movement patterns than anything. And I'm more, well, second most, I'm, I, I, I want to find asymmetries. I'm looking for things that, movement patterns that suck and movement patterns that are asymmetric. Right to left, top to bottom, that kind of thing. And we're only going to make it probably through three of these moves, maybe four. Okay, because um, we've got lots of stuff to talk about, so I want you guys to get the concept. If you got the concept, you could read this and go, oh yeah, that just totally makes a little bit more sense. So, um, if it's perfect, if someone moves and they're perfect on everything, I'm wasting my time with them, <laughs> and they're wasting their time with me, I want to find problems, because I'm a problem fixer, I'm a guy, right? How many of you have seen that, that little video, it's not about the nail? We're not going to spend the seven minutes to watch that video on YouTube, but you have to write this down. It's not about the, the nail. It's a YouTube video, husband and wife talking, and um, it's really fun. It's really, really good. I want to find nails, and I want to fix them. She doesn't want her nail fixed. She just wants him to listen to the problem. Um, anyway, so uh, we're trying to find dysfunctional movement patterns. We're trying to find asymmetrical movement patterns. If I have a dysfunctional movement pattern, right, what is causing that, give me two categories that can cause a dysfunctional movement pattern. What causes poor movement? Weakness. It's okay if you're wrong. It's okay. What? Biomechanics. Biomechanics, yes, that would be a global term. Excellent. So when I, if I go to do a squat and my squat kind of sucks, I may have mobility restrictions that are causing the squat to suck, or I may have all the mobility in the world, and I've got neuromotor control problems. Stability. Mobility, stability. Mobility, stability. Other than hands-on manual therapy, your entire world is going to be working on mobility and stability. <laughs> because if people move well, now you just get them stronger. You make them run faster, jump higher. The, the performance. That's great. And that's the fun stuff. Right? But if they don't move well, we don't work on making them stronger and run faster and jump higher because we're just perpetuating movement dysfunction. You never want to add weight to a poor movement strategy because you're just going to solidify that movement strategy. When you have a good movement strategy, finally, I might add weight to it to solidify that. That's why you load a movement pattern is to solidify that movement pattern, not to make it stronger. Make sense? So we're looking for mobility restrictions and stability restrictions to get to where we can strength train the person. I can look at a movement pattern and go, wow, we probably have some mobility and or stability problems. The FMS does not tell you whether it's a mobility or stability problem. It just tells you you have a problem. And that's what we're looking for. And is it a horrible, nasty problem? Or is it, oh, they look pretty good. And it's good enough to train. Or is it, oh my gosh, we got to take a video of that person because they, they do that better than anybody I've ever seen. That would be a three. Two is, oh, it looks pretty good. One is, I don't think that's right. <laughs> I don't think that's what a squat's supposed to look like. So one, we have to kind of train ourselves on what a squat's supposed to look like. So um, who here uh, would say they have a fair to maybe struggling squat? Just be honest with yourself. Fair to what? 
Struggling squash drum. Come on. Oh, God. No, that was good. No, you're good. Everybody's going to pick up everything. Yeah. So when I do a squat, there's a few things I want to look for. And this is, this is the first movement pattern that we're going to look through. I was taught, back in the age of the dinosaurs, that um, if I squat and my knees come past my toes, I'm going to hell. <laughs> and I don't want that for myself, so I, I, I kept my knees behind my toes. And if you do that, if I keep my knees behind my toes, when I squat, and I squat deep, is my spine parallel to my shins? Or am I in hip-dominant motion? My spine is more parallel to the ground. Now my spine is parallel with my shins. Now my spine is parallel to the ground. Shins, ground. My knees are in front of my toes here. And they will be if I drop my hips down below my knees. Period. That's okay. That requires mobility of my ankles, mobility of my knees, mobility of my hips especially. But mobility of my ankles, mobility of my hips, and mobility of my thoracic spine to do this exercise well. So if the exercise sucks, I maybe have a restriction in my ankle mobility, my hip mobility, my thoracic mobility, or my glenohumeral mobility, which is how the body is set. How many of you are familiar with mobile stable, mobile stable, mobile stable? Okay, so foot craves stability, ankle craves mobility, three-dimensional joint. Knee craves stability, hip mobility. Lumbar spine stability, thoracic spine mobility. Scapular stability, glenohumeral mobility. Elbow stability, wrist mobility. Finger stability, lower cervical spine stability relative to upper, which is mobility, because you get half your motion there, right? So it's a relative thing. So if the squat isn't what I want, I'm instantly thinking I probably got some mobility, or maybe you're just like super reflexible, and you just don't know how to move your body into a squat, right? I tell people, this is Colorado, this is Texas. And if I've never been to Texas, how do I know how to get to Texas if I don't have an iPad or an iPhone, right? <laughs> I don't know. I've never been there. Maybe my body just doesn't know what a, what a squat's supposed to look like. I got all the mobility in the world. Okay? Now, uh, you can start to guess, because um, big dude in the, cl in the class before, power lifter, yeah, my first guess is that he's a, got a stability problem. <laughs> if his squat sucks, I'm probably, he's probably stiff, <laughs> right? Because that's how God made him, right? You get somebody who walks like a dancer, <laughs> and they're nice, lean, young female, I go, oh, maybe it's a normal motor control issue. So that's what we're looking for. So I want you to put this on your head like this. Elbows at 90 degrees. And you're going to press straight up. Good. Press straight up. Excellent. Feet shoulder width apart. And I want you to drop down to the squat and pause for a second just so people can see you from the... we got a couple people looking from the front, a couple people looking from the side. And what I want to see is this pole is somewhere in between her toe and heel from a vertical standpoint. I want to see her hips below her knees. And I want to see her symmetrical from side to side, she's not dipping. Good. So is the pole in front of her toes? Yes. Are her hips below her knees? Not quite. Come on back up. Good. So I would say, I don't know if that's a one or a two yet. I know it's not a three. If it was a three, it just, it's like, holy cow, that was perfect. Right? So what I'm going to do for her is I'm going to put your heels up on this. And now if she can meet all those criteria with a cheat, she's at a two. So we're going to do the same thing, press up arm over the head, and drop down her hips below her knees. Yeah. There's a pull between her toe, toe and heel. Yeah. She's a little bit twisted. The right side's a little bit more forward than the left. But yeah, it is. Good. Nice back up. I would give that a two, which means she gets to go train squats. It does not mean that her squat is perfect and she doesn't need to work on her form, and I may find some mobility, stability restrictions that can get her better. But again, my goal is to find sucky movement patterns, not sit there and try to pick it apart on perfect. Now, the higher level the athlete, the more I'm going to be worried about perfection, right? Because, like, a race car is much different than my F-150. <laughs> like, my F-150 can have all sorts of troubles, and I can still pull a trailer. Uh, race car... It, Timing's a little bit off, it sucks. Make sense? So I would give that a two. A three would be she does not fit the criteria, or one would be she does not fit the criteria with the cheat. And a zero is if she had any pain with that. So she goes, yeah, my knee kind of, oh, it wasn't pain, but I kind of felt something in my knee. That was pain. <laughs> it, it felt something in my knee. Either that or she's a princess in the bee and we probably need to work on something anyway. So um, any pain with that? No, no, you feel something in here? <laughs> no. All right, good job. So um, let's grab somebody else who's pretty confident in their squat. 
Come get it. So um, just uh, don't even stand up on it to start with. And 90-90 at the, sh at the, there you go. And press up. And feet about shoulder width apart. Good. And so drop down. And, and for the sake of your classmates, normally I just have you drop down and come back up because I know what I'm looking for instantly. Pause for a second at the bottom. Good. Hips are below the knees. Pole is not quite behind the toes. And then back up. Thoracic. Are you a crossfitter? No, but like powerlifting. Okay, excellent. Because um, crossfitters nail this. Because like this is this is their lift, yeah. right? But how much lordosis do we have in the lumbar spine? Go ahead and do it again. So this would be my fine tuning because she's probably going to nail it too. But this would be my fine tuning on. I've I've got a lot right here uh -huh. and because her pair of spinals are thick enough come on back up my finger is going another inch before I actually hit her spine there so her TL junction is struggling pretty hard to, to get there um, <laughs> right right there that's right really yeah that's where that's where she was trying to hinge <laughs> and, and that would be a side note for me all I'm looking for is a number is it a one or a two or three it's not a three so go ahead and put your heels up on the board hands over here down. That's more of a two. She's struggling a little bit with that even. More of a two. I'm coming back up. Now, depending on the length of the femurs, the length of the torso, um, weight distribution, right? I'm a lot heavier upper body than I am in my butt. <laughs> I don't have a bubble butt and that kind of stuff. Um, so those are all going to change it. Nobody's squat should be exactly like somebody else's. What I'm looking for is that dysfunctional. That's not dysfunctional enough I wouldn't allow you to train, but again, same kind of thing is we've got some things to work on to, to help you move better, and we're going to theorize that if you move better, you're going to feel better and perform better, and less likely to get injured. Okay? Uh, so now, if somebody, again, they couldn't do that, so so you're kind of, some people are like, can we do two minuses or two pluses? No, no. It's a, did it suck? No, it's not a one. Is it pretty good? That's a pretty good squat, right? I mean, most people, if you look at it, you go, eh, it might be better than mine. Yeah, but pretty good squat. Uh, was it perfect? Do I want to take a picture of it with your feet on apart? Not necessarily. Not because you're not photogenic. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's a whole different, whole different subject. Um, so, make sense? Cool. Grab, grab a dowel, pick on each other. Um, you're going to be the patient for her. A dowel? I think that's judge. what that is. You're going to be the person for her. Judge. Here's a, yeah, there you go. Be judgy. Okay. Be judgmental. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be on the side. Okay. Good, so I these are definitely say... below. No, so why would you ever have this? Yeah, that's better. You're, 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 you're like leaning forward. Yeah, yeah. The bar has to be behind the toes. Yeah, that might be my turn. But instantly I'm going, she's got good hip mobility. Because I know her hips clear to me. So she's probably got good hip mobility. The bar is low. Right? And I would give that a solid two. She's got good knee mobility. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, so, <laughs> what you do is just pretty hard. Okay. Here. I just started her in yeah. steel yeah. flexion, which gives well, her relatively a lot more dorsiflexion. Here. So, if I'm thinking mobility, for yeah, you right off the gate, I'm thinking I'm going to want to look for your ankles. Yeah. I'm going to want to look for your thoracic spine. Because yeah. based, based on those first two moves, she definitely has enough hip and knee mobility. So, she's got mobility issues. Which is hard. Yeah, like that. Or, if those move great, I'm like, my back does like, I don't know, I've heard my back's pretty mobile. Her body doesn't tell the bottom of the squat. I know. It's a balanced coordination issue, or it's stability, if you want to think about it. How do you go from, like, starting at the hip to the thoracic? Yeah, it's like my hip. I would put you through, I would, I would measure my ankle, I'm sure. And I've got some cookies. For how to measure like Michael, that yeah. I love. We didn't even get to really? have a class class. Yeah. No. This is nor just to give you guys a heads up. This is normally a two-hour class, and it's just for FMS, and we have a hard time getting it done in two hours. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we haven't talked about any of the. I, I usually get ten hours with you guys a year, oh. and it's hard for me to get everything in in ten hours that I would like to get. Um, a couple of years ago, they actually petitioned to have for me to just have a whole branch off class about my treatment philosophy. And um, we're like, you know, maybe we can wedge it into this class. So actually last year I think we had 12 hours of work. So, 
So you need a lot of crap really fast. Okay? The biggest things I want you to get out of here, why am I doing the FMS? It is a tool that's been created that has some data behind it that I can hopefully properly assess movement patterns to find problems, asymmetries and or dysfunctions. Does that tell me what's wrong? No. Could that be a mobility problem? Yeah. Could it be a stability problem? Yeah. Could it be a pain problem? Yes. If I get pain, I'm done. I'm done testing completely. And now I put you through, if you're a great cook, to, through SFMA, not the FMS, or what I would say, a, a physical therapy evaluation. We've got to find what's causing the pain. What's the pain generator and why? Right? Um, so this doesn't tell you what to fix. This just tells you there's a problem. Could you come up with your own movement test to try to dis dis decipher out movement dysfunction? Totally. That's exactly what he did. Nothing existed. He said, well, let's make something. So him and his buddies got together, and they came up with this and said, yeah, I like that. You know, everything, everything they put you through is pretty functional, and it, it's looking, it, it, it will tell you if there's a problem. Now you have to go find the specific problem, and then you have a, move, you have a treatment strategy set up for that. My treatment strategy that I follow, that, I, that I've followed for years and years and years, is I listen, teach, touch, position, own it, and move it on it. That's what those people wanted to make me a class out of that and build a concept. But listen, teach, touch, position on it, movement on it. So you come into my clinic because you've got, where do you have problems? What? Where am I from? Yeah, did you say, no, where, where do you have problems? You said you have ankle problems? Yeah. Or who no, said you? No, oh, ankle. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're both wearing blue. Come on now. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's the masks. Everyone looks like the masks. Um, <laughs> Sorry, except you shaved your legs. I could tell the difference. Um, so, uh, <laughs> damn, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, ankle. I come in having an ankle problem. Yeah, so you come in and I go, okay, how's your ankle doing today? And you go, blah, 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 blah. I go, okay, you're doing your home exercise going, blah, 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 Okay, is it pain better or worse? Blah, 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 blah. And I go, okay, so here's where we're at. We worked on this last time. We're working on this today. We're going to do that. I think this is what's going on with you. Blah, blah, blah. I listen and I teach. Those are the first two things I do with everybody who walks through the door. If I'm not listening, I'm not doing my job. I'm not teaching, I'm not doing my job. Arguably, teaching I do throughout the whole thing, especially because I don't shut up. Um, I listen and I teach. Then I touch. If you've got some kind of capsular or non-capsular restriction, you guys are ions based, right? First thing, is a capsular, is there a restriction of motion? <laughs> yes. Is a capsular or non pattern I don't know. Okay, well, then go test it again. You missed something. Um, right? <laughs> I listen, teach, and if there's a restriction, then it's either going to be my fascial, mus it, musculoskeletal trigger point type thing, it's going to be capsular or non-capsular ligamentous, which means I have a manual technique to help with that, right? And I've got a bazillion manual techniques I've collected over 22 years of doing this job. And there's probably about two dozen that I use all the time. And the other ones, there's, you're going to have your money moves with everything. But I listen, teach, touch. Then I position the body in the position I want it, and I learn to own that position. Again, this is Colorado, this is Texas, right? My body is pretty good at Colorado. I function in Colorado all day long. My body doesn't. Ever since we invented a toilet, we don't function in Texas because <laughs> we only make it to about here. Here, if it's a public toilet, <laughs> right? She don't touch the toilet. Ah, you're worried about a mask? Yeah, okay. Um, so I listen, teach, touch. I position the body in the start position of the movement pattern, in the finish position of the movement pattern, and I learn how to own it. And then I move between start and position. I take my road trip from Texas to Colorado, and then I own that. The steps to owning something, I challenge it through planes of motion, stability and planes of motion. Technically, I follow the neurodevelopmental sequence. I work on head movement, then I work on extremity movement. And that's a different strategy, and that's a different class. But you can figure out, I'm going to try to own that position of a deep squat. Good example is, you're pretty close. Do you have these, uh, get down to half the end for me real quick, please. Sometimes I forget to say please. Yeah, that would be tall. Sorry, perfect. It's all good. It's nervous. I make people nervous. It's okay. <laughs> so slide this back until your heel is still on the ground, but you've got the kind of maximum dorsal flexion. Good, so get that, well, you got to make sure your heel's on. So, what I'd like to see is a good, quick screen. Who ever asked me that question? Is if this is a wall, she should be able to get her fist between the wall and her toe, right? 
and her heel should be able, and her heel should be able to remain. Yeah, it's okay. You can read, you move that. That's just good. that's just to start with, so I know how far back I am. And then she should be able to touch her knee to the wall and keep her heel flat. That tells me she has adequate dorsiflexion with the knee bent to do squats and lunges and play. And if she doesn't, if she can't get her fist between her toe and the wall and touch her knee to the wall, I've got an ankle mobility restriction. And if I've got a restriction in stability and a restriction in mobility, I'm working on mobility first. Because you, you can't be stable in a range of motion you don't have. Right? Question number one, is there a mobility restriction? <laughs> right? Okay. So, um, had I done that just then, and she was restricted in her ankle, I go, ooh, maybe that's why when I cheat for her ankle, her squat was great. I'm going to work on some ankle mobility things. See what happens. See if that changes. Now I know she's got adequate ankle mobility. I'm going, ooh, maybe it's a stability issue. Or I'm going to check the mobility in her hips and mobility in her thoracic spine. And I've got other ways to do that. Lay her down and check her hip mobility real quick. Uh, thoracic spine, I've got some go to's for checking the thoracic spine. You guys have learned that. How do you, right? Whether you want to get real super technical and measure with a goniometer, I don't care. But, the, but you know how to look at that. And then if you find a restriction, you work on it. Ideally, you could find one exercise or two that addresses ankle mobility and hip mobility and thoracic mobility and glenohumeral mobility. And I've got some money moves that do all those. It's one stretch. That one of my patient has one thing to do. How many people in here found that they have dysfunction in their body? Right? How many of you worked on that last night? Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> right? I mean, I've got lots of dysfunction. When we get to shoulder, you're going to see my dysfunction. Squats, not so bad. My inline lunge, not so bad. My push-up, awesome. My, uh, <laughs> and so that's my superpower. Um, my, my, my shoulder mobility, not, not so hot. Um, if I was your patient and, and you're working on strength training me for a shoulder problem, you might have missed something. You might have missed something. Make sense? That's what this is about. Um, so now that I decided, let's say I cleared your thoracic spine for mobility and your hips for mobility, and I go, the squat isn't what I want it to be, right? So maybe you just don't know where Texas is. So I'm going to teach you where Texas is. Come, come sit on the front of the chair. Cool. And now we're going to get your nose in front of your nose. <laughs> your toes behind your knees. Or your nose. You know, feet shoulder width apart. Like you're, uh, get, I'm going to put you in the bottom of the squat position. So get your feet where you would be to squat. And I need you. You're not going to hell. Back your feet up. There you go. A little bit more. A little bit more. Right about there. And your knee should technically, if you're in a deep squat, your knee should be over your fourth toe and out in front a little bit, so about right there, right? So we're still, yeah, pretty close. Good. Now sit up nice and tall for me. Put your hands over your head. Now I want you to hip hinge forward, not slump forward. So really anterior pelvic tilt, because your patients will know what that means. <laughs> Put your belly button between and lean far enough forward to where it feels like you're, you pretty much need to almost start standing. Good. Hold right there. Now push into the ground just enough to have, not even come up all the way out of the chair. Just halfway out of a chair, and I want you to hold that and breathe. Nope, you're all the way out of the chair. You're an overachiever. Stop it. Good. So shoulders back. Good. Anterior pelvic tilt. Push into the ground to halfway lift yourself up in the chair, and then just hold it. Not all the way. No, you stop overachieving. Good. Just hold and breathe. Hold and breathe. Hold and breathe. Let back down. So if a zero on an effort scale was I could do this all day, Mark, and a 10 was I can't do that at all, Mark, where were you at? Can you give me a five? Perfect. <laughs> if you're at a seven, that is not a good exercise for you because you're probably compensating and maybe I'm not good enough to see, see that you're compensating. I can visually see if you're breathing, which means you're compensating, which means I made it too hard. I can visually see if you start doing this kind of thing. <laughs> or your fingers start making funny fists and stuff like that. Or your toes start gripping the floor. There's lots of things I can do to see visually that your body has passed the point of learning <laughs> and it's compensating. But from an effort scale, it's really quick to go, what number would you give that? And if they go three, four, or five, that's my sweet spot. That means that's an exercise she can do well, without pain, to learn where Texas is. Right? And then someday, I may pull the chair off. Right? That would be one example of a corrective strategy, given that I know you have ankle mobility and hip mobility and thoracic mobility, so it's a balanced neuromotor control issue. So, make sense? Good. So that's not what this class is about, is corrective strategies and, and that kind of stuff, but that, if you walk out of here without it, great. I know that I know there are one, two, and a six. What, what do I do with that? 
the big takeaways from today is this is a method of finding movement dysfunction. It's okay, nobody knows. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I wouldn't call you out for it. I, uh, it's, uh, just be mean. Um, to find movement dysfunction, right, which will be either a mobility and or a stability problem. And then I get to tease that out with all the other things you guys have learned to give a corrective strategy to help them move better, with the theory being if they move better, they're going to perform better, less likely to get injured. If they have pain with anything, this is an illegitimate test and we need to move on to something else. Cool? All right, number two, hurdle step. So somebody grab their hand out, and I'm going to steal you for your hurdle step. So toes up against the thing. Yep, and feet together. Good. And then I'm going to steal you because the real tool has these little things that stick up out of the board, and they have a rubber band that runs across to make it a hurdle. Right? We want to be at her tibial tuberosity height. So grab the other end of that stick. And now we're going to move it. Don't go up or down. Just move straight forward right there. Because that's what the tool would end up looking like. And we only have one tool and we've got lots of you guys. So now, can you give her your pole? Sure. Put the pole on your shoulders like you're doing a back squat. Perfect. So you guys are going to look for, is she symmetrical when she steps over? Or does she tip to one side or the other? You're also going to look for, she should be in perfect sagittal plane motion. In other words, her hips shouldn't internally or externally rotate. She shouldn't kind of um, go through inversion or eversion of the ankle or anything. It should just be perfectly sagittal. You're going to step over, tap your heel, step back over to the start position. Good. Just with one foot? Just with one foot. Okay. Good. And back over. Was that perfect sagittal plane motion? Mm. Good. You get three tries. Go ahead. <laughs> And it's okay if your calf touches it. Let's keep running over the floor. There you go. One yeah. more time. Good. Well, oh, sorry, I didn't look up. You're not supposed to watch your feet. Oh. Right? Because we're trying to work stability, which is neuromotor control, which is right balance, which is proprioception. And she's she, she, she girl cheated. Yeah. I did it again. <laughs> try the other. Try the other leg. Good job. Oh, good job. Yeah. Look up, girl. So do you see what's going on in her ankle? Yeah. So she's got, yeah. now, what could be a mobility restriction that's causing that? Because we're going to start with mobility. Hip and ankle. Yeah, right? If I don't have enough hip flexion, we had a girl in the last class, she had a really cool accent. I don't know where she is. Yeah, really cool. And she started talking, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I wish I had an accent. Um, but it, she did this. If I don't have enough flexion, I'm going to do something to get over it, or do I not have enough dorsiflexion? You know, my brain knows that. My brain knows it can't do it right, so it's trying to do this. Here's a concept. This is, you know, I said one third of the stuff I'm going to teach you today has nothing to do with FMS, but it's actually probably the most important stuff you learned today. We'll talk about marriage here in a minute. But, um, uh, <laughs> dang it, I forgot again. Um, I believe God put a spirit inside this body, right? And it's driving this body around. No different than my body drives my pickup truck around, right? My pickup truck craves gas, oil, spark plugs. Is that normal for a pickup truck to, to crave that stuff? Because it's made out of pickup truck stuff, right? This is made out of what? Muscles, tendons, ligaments, fascia. I'm a 66% water with a bunch of hormones and chemicals running around in this thing, right? And then somewhere inside there's a spirit. My spirit loves grace, peace, mercy, joy, forgiveness, if I do something nice for somebody today, it did not come from my glutes and my quads and my biceps. My glutes and quads and biceps could care less about you guys. <laughs> the thing inside driving this thing enjoys being here. My body craves stuff different than my spirit craves, just like my body craves stuff different than my pickup stuff. My body craves pizza. My body craves caffeine, big time. Uh, donuts, sacks, normal stuff. Why? It's made out of this stuff. And that's what this stuff craves. My body craves comfort more than anything. So does yours. Now, I've had people challenge me, patients challenge me. No, 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 I, I push myself. Well, it's probably you got other issues in your life, right? <laughs> and you're using fitness as an outlet. And that's cool. I do that too. Some people just use a bottle. Uh, whatever. Um, everybody's body craves comfort. 
you disagree with me, show me the pile of rocks that you sit on when you Netflix. <laughs> right? If you had a choice between sitting on the floor right now or a recliner, what are you going to choose? Right? The body will always choose comfort. Easy. Path of least resistance, just like lightning. And the brain, her brain is seeing this as the path of least resistance, which is not the path of least resistance. Unless you have a mobility restriction or a stability restriction. Because path of least resistance should just be straight plane. Make sense? So, if I clear her out and she didn't have any mobility restrictions in ankle dorsiflexion or hip flexion, right? Then I'm thinking it's a neuromotor control problem. And I keep saying neuromotor control, not balance. Is she balancing on one leg? Right. Show me a balance exercise, just randomly. Perfect. Show me a balance exercise. Perfect. Show me a balance exercise. Perfect. Show me a balance exercise. You know where this is going. So who chose something other than standing on one leg? What have you guys been ingrained in your brain? What balance is? Standing on one freaking leg. <laughs> do me a favor. Um, uh, we'll do that half kneeling again, okay. not the tall kneeling. Good. Now put your heel right in front where your heel is touching your knee and your toe is straight forward. Good. And then sit tall. No, I mean just stay there. Oh, but just oh. give me a tall spine. Good. Now close your eyes. Turn your head side to side. Can I balance and half kneeling? <laughs> Can I give her a dumbbell and pass it back and forth in her hand? Can I challenge balance in this case of position? Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is this a balance exercise? Is this a balance exercise? A balance exercise. Yeah. Can I balance in supine? Yes. Prone? Yes. Sideline? Yes. Tall kneeling, half kneeling. I would encourage you when you have pet patients that are sent to you for balance, you don't just stand on one leg and then change the surface you're standing on. We usually do a two hour lab on balance here and it, we just barely scratch the surface of what, what you can do to balance. Balance is neuromotor control. Balance is stability in any body position. You guys are all balancing right now. In fact, the last class I go, give me a balance exercise. And he just stood there. It's perfect. <laughs> he was. He, he, he was cool. I was like, that was pretty good. Most people, <laughs> most people don't get that tricky. But yeah, that's a balance exercise. Since, you know, one person does it. And usually what happens is somebody does something some, 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 some different. It's all one way. Balance is lots of different things. That was a balance exercise. Because it's stability, neuromotor control, proprioception. Right? Good stuff. All right. Um, partner up in threes. Okay? We're actually... One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and four. Do what we just did here. Go to tibial to city height. So one person's a subject, the other two people, people are the machine holding the stick. And then one person is judging. Be judgy. I'll be the stick holder first. Or I'll be whatever. Do you want me to pause your video? Oh, yes. Okay.